dela ou tá tu que usar que busca os feedbacks, mas é bem que tá os outros. É, tá bom. Tá bom. Nee, das erwarte ich von ihm auch nicht. Aber dass er. Dass ich nicht salott. Das ist irgendwie lustig. Das ist so ein bisschen. Er will mich das Gefühl geben, ich weiß nicht, wovon ich rede. Und ich misse salot, weil ich das, nicht, das Ganze nicht verstehe. Ich bin schon in einem Meeting.
mic issues. <laughs> No, we cannot hear you, Richie. Not yet. Hello, everyone. Hello. Okay, looks like um, people are still joining. I know Richie tries as well, but Zoom is not always working what best with Linux. Oh, Richie is here. Okay, so I was I was wrong. Anyway, so welcome everyone. Uh, please make sure you open the doc. And um, you know, mark your um, there's like attendees list. So please add yourself. Uh, let me actually send you the doc as well in case you don't have that open. So we have a couple of agenda items today. If you have anything else, just just drop it there. Um, and we have first one from Steve, I suppose. Uh, are you here with us? Yes, I yep. should be. I am here. I will go. Let me just share my screen and we can kick off. Cool. Uh, so based on the conversation last time, there was kind of request around semantic conventions and open telemetry. So I figured I would do a quick introduction of what the project is in case people are not aware and then talk about semantic conventions at a very high level goal is only to take about 10 minutes here. So I'm sure there'll be action items. Uh, I'm going to link in a presentation I did earlier this year. This is some of the slides actually from that presentation. But if people are interested in learning more about the project, it's about an hour long and it kind of dives into all the different aspects. So for people uh, curious, Open Symmetry is the joining of two other projects. In CNCF, you may be aware of Open Tracing, which is an incubating uh, project. There was also another one called Open Census, which came out of uh, Google, Microsoft, and Omniscient. Uh, these two projects combined to form Open Telemetry. This was announced at uh, KubeCon Europe last year. And the way that you should think about it is that Open Telemetry is basically the next major version of Open Tracing and Open Census. And all the lessons learned and best practices are being added to Open Telemetry. Uh, there is backwards compatibility with Open Tracing and Open Census through the use of shims, uh, but going forward, all the development will be on Open Telemetry. Now, uh, what is the Open Telemetry project trying to solve? Uh, I like this table representation. So if you've heard of observability, you've heard of the three pillars of observability, traces, metrics, and logs. These are just different data sources. Uh, what's actually more interesting is that for each of these different data sources, there's a variety of different layers, like uh, the APIs to actually generate and emit the telemetry data that you care about, the implementation, which is typically referred to as like the client libraries that you add to your application code itself, there's all the infrastructure aspects. So think like agents or gateways or collectors or whatever you want to call it. And then a variety of different formats. Like in the case of tracing, you have context propagation. You may have heard of Zipkin's B3 uh, or the new standard that's emerging, the W3C trace context. You also have different wire formats of how you actually send this data over, over the network. Um, Open Symmetry is looking to basically solve all of this. So the best way to think about it is uh, anything you do to instrument, generate, and emit telemetry data in your environment, uh, Open Telemetry is trying to provide a solution for. Where it draws the line is that it does not provide a backend. It supports a variety of different open source and even commercial backends, but it does not actually provide a backend, and that is not part of its scope. 
The initial focus for OpenSymmetry was very much focused on traces and metrics. So log support is still very early days, but uh, is part of the charter and is starting to be incorporated into the project currently. Uh, kind of taking that table and representing it into what you will actually find in the in the repository uh, or the project or of open telemetry. You have the specification, which is the foundation. That's actually where the semantic conventions live and where we'll be spending time today. Uh, but there's three basic components here, the API, the SDK, and then uh, all the data stuff, which is semantic conventions and protocol. Uh, on top of the specifications, there's two other main components. There's the collector, which is a way of uh, receiving, processing, and exporting generated telemetry data. Uh, it's actually a single binary that can be deployed either as an agent or as a standalone service, and it is the default destination for open telemetry client libraries. And then client libraries are just a single way to instrument your app and to emit traces and metrics and eventually logs. Uh, it supports both manual, which means you would go in and make code modifications, as well as automatic, which means you change runtime parameters or add dependencies. Uh, the automatic aspect only works for traces today, but the goal is to add that for metrics and logs as well. The project as a whole is officially in beta. Beta was announced in early March and GA is planned before the end of the year for traces and metrics specifically. Uh, so a lot of uh, active work going on right now as, as GA is pretty imminent at this point. We're probably about, I don't know, four to five weeks away. And uh, interesting data fact for everyone, Open Symmetry is actually the second most active project in CNCF today behind only Kubernetes. Uh, this is according to CNCF dev stats. You can actually go, go look this up. It's, uh, it's basically a Grafana front end to some Prometheus metric data that CNCF collects. Uh, so the project is, is very active. And then final slide basically is just, there's a lot of contributions and adoptions going on here. We're seeing cloud providers, we're seeing uh, vendors, and we're seeing end users kind of all get together. I think this speaks to a problem that, that OpenSymmetry is trying to solve. Uh, and we're seeing other industry products get behind it as well. For example, Jaeger uh, already announced that they are moving from the Jaeger collector to the OpenSymmetry collector. Uh, Fluent Bit has added uh, log support to the collector. Uh, there's roadmap items to add OpenSymmetry client library instrumentation into Envoy and Spring. Uh, so a lot of cool work going on here. There's some, some links to some additional uh, reading information uh, as well. Uh, question in the Slack, what is the open metrics roadmap? Uh, how to better incorporate open metrics uh, into this model as well? So today the focus has been on supporting like the Prometheus endpoint, but nothing specific to, to open metrics. Uh, question, which vendors do you have on board? Uh, you name the vendor, I'm sure they're on board. So New Relic, AppD, Dynatrace, Honeycomb, Splunk, Lightstep, uh, Elastic, Sentry, I don't know, there's a lot. <laughs> but uh, pretty much any major vendor in the space and all the open source ones are supported too. So Jaeger, Zipkin, Prometheus. Um, but any, any vendor in the tracing or metric space pretty much uh, has a way of uh, consuming this data today. There's, there's actually a lot of vendors that don't and that aren't involved, just a heads up. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, and then from uh, Next Steps, if people are interested, the, all the conversations happen on Gitter. You can go join Gitter. Uh, there's a whole bunch of SIGs or special interest groups uh, for open symmetry. And a lot of uh, GitHub issues have been labeled with good first issue and help wanted labels. Uh, so that's kind of some quick context. Any questions before I jump into semantic conventions? Let's do it. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a specification that is in the specification repository. Uh, there's a huge table of contents here, but one section is all around uh, data specifications and semantic conventions. When you click that link, you will basically see that there are three different types of conventions that are defined today. Spans for spans, metrics for metrics, and then this thing called resource. Uh, I should explain resource. Uh, so basically, OpenTelemetry's approach is that anything infrastructure-like is considered a resource. 
So if I have like an application that emits a metric or emits a span, well, that application is running on something. Maybe it is a Docker container on a Kubernetes cluster that's in an AWS region as part of an EC2 instance. Uh, so that like chaining of events is considered resource information. Uh, and OpenTelemetry has conventions around tagging what is a resource so you can uh, identify objects regardless of their data source. Spans and metrics are kind of self-explanatory. Eventually logs will be added, as I mentioned, it's still early days for that in the collector. Uh, from a resourcing perspective, uh, there's a bunch of kind of unique names here. I won't have time to cover all of it, but uh, as you can see for each subcategory, like what is a service, there are uh, what are called attributes. Attributes are like labels or key value pairs that you add on to things. Uh, for each of these different conventions, you'll see kind of a description, what type it is, whether it's required or not, which means it needs to be included as part of the telemetry data that's emitted, or whether it's optional and, and you don't have to rely on it. Uh, the primary reason why these semantic conventions exist is because normalizing how you emit the telemetry data uh, gives you the ability of having a vendor agnostic solution. So if everyone kind of knows that in this case, the service name and the instance ID is required and the other fields are not, well then you can now take on a dependency for these required fields and make them meaningful regardless of the back end that you send that data to. Uh, for the non-required fields, well, some vendors actually do care about the non-required fields. It's actually required for them. Uh, some of the non-required fields are just additional metadata that can be beneficial, but could also increase costs or cardinality depending on your, your use case. Uh, on, if you drill into these, you can get down to like very specific things. Like I mentioned AWS or different cloud providers, there are conventions for that or something like Kubernetes, very common in cloud native or CNCF. You'll see that there's different uh, naming standards around like namespaces or pods or controllers. Uh, all of this is kind of defined on a variety of different uh, readme files here. You can drill into the specifics. There are tracing semantic conventions. So these are things like, how do I know that thing over there is a database? How do I know I'm making a RESTful call? How do I know I'm talking to a serverless function? What is that message queue? Uh, these are kind of normalized ways to tag on that information. Uh, one of the reasons why this is kind of powerful for distributed tracing is because I can actually infer services that are not instrumented. Like if my application calls a third party database that I do not control uh, and I use these conventions, I can actually infer that that is a database, that it had an error, that it has this latency, and I can actually show that in like a back end of my choice, which is, which is kind of cool. The metrics one, if you go to it, you'll see it has a very big to do on it. Uh, so that one has not been merged yet. And what uh, I would encourage folks to do is actually look at what are called OTEPs. So OTEPs are Open Telemetry Engineering Proposals. Uh, basically, these are design docs, if you will. And so there's a variety of different proposals against all different categories, traces, metrics, and logs being the primary ones. Uh, in here, there actually is an OTEP for standard naming and runtime of metrics that includes the name of them as well as the labels. The labels are the dimensions or the metadata that you enrich. Uh, this proposal kind of outlines how to do this in different aspects, whether it be the collector or the client libraries. There's a bunch of links as to how this is currently implemented in OpenTelemetry, uh, but there is no finalized version for the metric semantic conventions, which I'm assuming this audience primarily cares about from a Prometheus perspective. Uh, but there is a proposal up. Uh, all of these proposals people can kind of comment on, and then eventually they get approved, merged, and implemented across client libraries and, and, different, uh, and the collector itself. Uh, I want to be respectful of time, so I'll open it up to questions, and I'm happy to do follow-ups if we want to drill into the specifics of these, but hopefully this provides a good foundation on what is open telemetry, what are semantic conventions, and what is currently available today. No, it's an amazing overview. Um, so uh, maybe first question, can you link the PR um, into our documents so we can maybe take our time and review? I think this is pretty, yep. pretty nice. I love the idea of proposals. It's, it's super powerful in a GitHub. Yep. Uh, one question was around uh, releases, like um, how OpenTelemetry releases those different, you know, support for vendors or uh, yeah, anything really, like um, how it works. Do you have any release process cadence? 
Yeah, yeah. So the way that the project operates today is that every every repository uh, has its own set of approvers and maintainers, and you should think of it as an independent project in many ways, shapes, or forms. So uh, every team can kind of decide what they want their cadence to be. In general, you'll find that the client libraries release anywhere from once a week to once a month. That's general. It falls into that realm somewhere. Uh, the collector is once every two weeks today. Uh, and specifications are, are updated as, as needed. All the SIGs meet at least once every two weeks. Some meet every single week. Uh, the more interesting question is actually the one around vendor support. Let me just show that mm -hmm. real quick. Uh, I'll use the collector as an example because I'm most familiar with this aspect. Uh, there is this repository called Open Telemetry Collector. It is the core collector uh, repository. Everything in here is open source. So you will find that it has like support for Zipkin, Prometheus, uh, Jaeger, Kafka, but there are no vendor stuff in this repository. Instead, what OpenTelemetry does is has this notion of a, oops, I guess I didn't go to it, of a contrib repository. So for every core, there is a contrib. The contrib repository is where either uh, vendor or commercial third party stuff lives or where non common open source things live. So if we go into here and look at the exporter, I mentioned a whole bunch of companies that are supported. You can see all the vendor uh, stuff listed here. Contrib is a superset of core. So you get everything in core within Contrib and then all the additional stuff on top of that. Most of the client libraries do the same thing. You'll see a Java and a Java Contrib. You'll see a Python and a Python Contrib. Nice, Mike, no, it makes sense. Um, <laughs> how, I mean, it's all, always kind of tricky with, especially with, you know, Golang and stuff, how, how you add those plugins and, <laughs> you know, there's like a yeah, vendor. It just basically wraps all of them, right? You can't do auto instrumentation with Golang. So you just wrap the, the packages yeah. that you're, that you're using. Makes sense. Yeah. I have a question that I've gotten from a number of others, but, and, and I know we're, we're going really fast here and this isn't a full hotel overview, but, you know, suppose folks have existing, um, you know, Prometheus or Thanos or Cortex or some sort of uh, open metrics, remote read, remote write based durable metrics backend. Um, I understand that there's, you know, there's things going the other way, but but for things that are instrumented and are surfacing open telemetry metrics via the open telemetry APIs and using collectors and things like that, is there a document you could point us to or is there a curated way to actually have it go from open telemetry metrics and have those those metrics land in a remote write compliant back end, whether it's Prometheus or any of the other pile of things that comply with that interface. Yeah, so some of the remote write capabilities, not all of them are there yet. Uh, our answer today would be like, you'll see official Prometheus support. Oh, I guess I'm in the wrong repository right now. Let's go to exporter. Uh, exporters are the way that you get data out. So you'll see remote write exporter was just merged. That's a look at that, <laughs> hot off the press. Uh, so these are ways that you could configure to send to a remote write destination. Uh, so you basically read either the receiver documentation on how you push or pull to get data in or the exporter documentation on how you read or write to push data out. Uh, it doesn't matter whether say open symmetry sits between. So let's say you have an application that sends to a collector and the collector sends to Prometheus, or if you have an application that sends to Prometheus and the collector scrapes Prometheus and gets the data back out, uh, both mechanisms would be supported. Uh, but there is no real documentation around this today other than the receivers and exporters themselves. This is something that's been talked about in OpenTelemetry, but it's not available yet. I see, and the previous approach, not the remote write exporter, but just the Prometheus exporter, does that basically just set up a Prometheus style exporter that then needs to be rescraped by a Prometheus. Yep. Versus the push. Okay, cool. Yep. And again, I'm happy to spend more time dr drill into this. I know we have other topics for today. Uh, this is just meant to be more of an introduction. Feel free to put questions in the in the Zoom Slack in the Slack channel or in the Google Doc. I'll take a look at it and we can definitely do follow ups on this. Yeah, I think we actually plan to do some webinars and introduce some projects. So actually, you stepped in and actually introduced well and open telemetry. So we can we can have a bit of time for some questions. Uh, so anyone? Don't 
don't be shy. Uh, if not, we can actually talk about metric label semantics, right? A little bit. Um, yeah, can you Does can you put the PR right? maybe? Uh, yep, I'll put that back up. Just give me a second. I can throw it in the Slack channel here too. And those semantics are just uh, suggestions or actually they will be checked and validated during runtime? Yeah, so the, the maybe a good example would be looking at the tracing one since these are already merged. Uh, let's use RESTful calls as an example. Uh, this table is going to be kind of large, but it'll at least give you an idea. And it doesn't seem very well. Um, so here's an example of uh, four spans, so for trace data. Uh, if you are making a call to a RESTful endpoint, uh, what metadata is expected or what metadata do we have conventions around that you can actually tack on as you're emitting that telemetry data? So you'll see that like the HTTP.method is a string field. It is required and we give like some examples of what some valuable, uh, val valid options would be for that particular method. Whereas something like the URL is not actually required, but you could add it. Um, there are trade-offs between this. You'll actually see a lot of discussion in the proposals that go up into the OTEPs. Uh, let's say like, why is URL not required? Well, high cardinality would probably be a compelling reason. All the different yeah. unique values here, do they actually provide that much meaning versus like a normalized, just an endpoint uh, versus the full URL or more specifically the URI here. Um, these conventions are typically talked about by multiple different vendors, vendors that are involved with open telemetry, of course, not vendors that are not, uh, but uh, a lot of vendors bring in like their backend implementations and discuss why they did it that way. And then vendors will kind of talk about what is the best way forward if they want to try to get a semantic convention added. Uh, end users will do the exact same thing. A lot of end users actually have their own client libraries or their own telemetry data today, and they're looking for paths forward as they move to a more open source and open standards approach approach. Um, in the case of metrics, uh, while the OTEP is not actually a PR, like this has been merged, right? Yeah, I'm not actually in pull requests. So this is actually merged as a standard metric system, uh, but not something that's actually been brought over to the metric SIG, I'm guessing, and merged into the conventions. That's why the metrics page is still a to do here. Uh, this might also still be a to do because the metric specification was not in the stable state yet, uh, where the tracing one is. So this might be dependent on metrics becoming stable. I believe there's a PR open for that right now. Uh, and I don't know if there's something yeah, specific you want to look at here, but you can see uh, typically OTEPs will link to prior implementations. So you'll see that there was a, a previous OTEP that tried to define some of these conventions. You'll see things that are actually happening in different projects like the collector or the Go client library. And then based on that, a proposal is made around like what conventions would look like, uh, what types of units would be supported, things like that. Hmm. This, okay, so this is not really necessarily around labels itself. It's, it's really even about semantics about, you know, how each of the metric names should look like, right? So this one is both. Uh, it's supposed to talk about names, labels, and conventions for common uh, instrumentation. Uh, but I believe if you actually look at this, most of this is metric names. Name, name, name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, metrics, metrics. For example, Go uses Go. I mean, this does seem to talk a lot more about metric names than it does about the actual labels themselves. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so you know, my first question is like, I I, I came from Prometheus Hold and Prometheus Maintainer, and to me, we are always fighting over you know the naming and you know it kind of matters if it's like counter and then maybe a total suffix and stuff around that so to me those names uh, are totally new to me uh, but probably you know i was not heavy user of other monitoring systems as well so um i guess it was kind of experience of many many vendors and to me there was like a project which was uh, kind of kind of trying to establish some of those at least naming uh, like possible naming let's say rules which is open open metrics um so how how this is relevant to that did, did we kind of uh manage to collaborate on this or probably not what, what what's what's your take here 
Sure. Yep. So uh, the Open Symmetry team has. Do I have it open? Uh, I probably need to go to the community page. Da, 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 da. Community members. Okay, cool. So the Open Symmetry uh, project has a governance like most do. It also has a technical steering committee. Where is that? Maintainers, trace approvers. Oh, here we go. Technical steering committee. Uh, so this is the current technical steering committee. Uh, this group I know has met with the Open Metrics team multiple times. Uh, I do not know the outcome of those decisions. Uh, I am most familiar with Bogdan. Uh, so I would recommend reaching out to Bogdan, but he would probably have the latest on what is going on with that. I know there's been a lot of back and forth communication. Uh, I haven't actually seen anything come out of that. So I don't know the answer to your question. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Thank you. Uh, yeah, to be honest, you know, seek observability is the, you know, I don't know, like um, a very good place to actually have those discussions around, yeah, some, somehow um, taboo, uh, you know, topics of, of, you know, some overlaps between projects and, you know, why we should kind of collaborate. Um, but yeah, I think uh, we should definitely talk about this, this a little bit more. Uh, but those semantics are, you know, one one level of overlap that uh, that you know some something that open telemetry, open metrics already kind of uh, specify in some way, but not everything, not the actual naming of the you know CPU utilization. Um, so I would be curious if they don't even you know conflict because that would be kind of annoying, really. So yeah, that would be my kind of concern and and something to discuss further. But overall, yeah, even in Prometheus there are many semantics, uh, let's say, recommendations that are just spoken and never actually, you know, written down. So um, it would be amazing. Even I would be super curious to get, get for that um, and, and to review. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And yeah. Richie is speaking on the channel with some more information. I guess he cannot talk. I joined the metrics call several times. My last status was that the plan of open telemetric metrics was to support uh, open metrics as a first class wire format and naming was a huge part of the discussion. I was under the impression that open telemetry would follow open metrics, Prometheus and Kubernetes as the standard. So I guess there is some kind of miscommunication or, or something we can actually yeah, uh, discuss further, uh, but you know. Yeah, and there um, is a dedicated metrics uh, specification SIG for people that are interested. There's links here that mm. people can go join to kind of talk about that particular aspect, or there's the general specification meeting as well. Um, but yeah, I, I can follow up with, with Bogdan uh, on this and try to figure out what, uh, what the status is. Who on the open metrics side would be a good point of contact? I think well, Bogdan you, would probably know. You, yes. Richie, Richie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Perfect. you can, you can. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I was not involved in the discussions, but uh, I'm super, you know, into community and just collaborating. We, what we did, uh, I mean, you did that as well with the open tracing and open census, how you were able to actually merge and not fight each other. We are doing the same with Thanos at Cortex. Uh, we are literally slowly, you know, reusing the stuff. So, it's hard, but like the discussion is worth to have. So yeah, I'm happy to um, and curious uh, how we can move that forward. Yeah. Yeah, having that remote right exporter is uh, <laughs> that that's a really good um, sign, right? I mean, that that by definition is that wire protocol. So I'd love to see. Well, remote right of... has nothing to do with open open metrics, though, right? Um, and yeah. To be honest, remote True. right is. Is even more, more concerning for um, backend systems like uh, Thanos Cortex, M3DB, uh, I don't know, CloudWatch, which who, who probably someday will support, you know, or even now supports remote right or, or things like that. Uh, because I assume this is like a sidecar uh, near our application, there will be a sidecar with open telemetry that just pushes metrics directly to. Uh, to those backends, uh, as far as I know, this is not like very scalable. But I guess for some use cases that makes sense. So, but anyway, yeah, maybe I, it would make sense. Good that there is a standard that is here. <laughs> yeah, maybe it would make sense for for Richie or someone to do an overview of open metrics and and what specifically it is. 
Um, I was just meaning more in terms of interoperability, like we use remote write um, as our standard internally in, in our own in our own um, infrastructure. You know, and, and granted, that's not specifically to your point, open metric specifically, but it's it's the closest thing we could find quickly to be able to interoperate across systems for metrics. Um, in any event, um, I know I know, I know Richie can't respond with a mic, but um, I'll talk. Yeah, that would be a good topic. <laughs> I about. would definitely be interested in that for sure. So, yeah, I know it's been um, yeah, well, yeah. Well, I'll let Richie cover it maybe next next time around. But um, but yeah, there's some very long long running, long pull things that, that, that could be coming to a head as I understand in the near term um, around open metrics as, a, as an actual standard um, with IETF and stuff. So anyway. But I would I want to just summarize that like having a, a nice semantics like metric name defined for overall CPUs, uh, CPU usage for let's say both Golang and Python and different kind of like it's it's golden because uh, right now, like all those dashboards and alerts would, would be able to work across different, you know, uh, different backends and different, well, different applications, different languages, different uh, maybe orchestration systems. So that's really, really amazing. Uh, and we have to have those. So that's, that's a really good step. Okay. So it looks like yeah. Ash Knight and talk about the open metric specification and the metric semantics. Uh, definitely open metrics doesn't, you know, define everything, but I, I, for example, um, having a, a dot in the name of the metric is, you know, I, I don't know if it's even allowed by open metrics. So how people can, can, can kind of, you know, leverage the semantics here. So uh, those small details might be, I might be curious of. I added an action item on maybe Richie to show us and talk about uh, open, tele, open metrics more uh, at some point as well. Cool. Yeah, one thing worth way. noting, um, I mean, we didn't cover the specifics of it, but one of OpenSymmetry's goals is to be format agnostic. So it has something called OTLP, which is the OpenTelemetry protocol. Uh, it is meant to be a super set of capabilities. So like the collector can actually receive in Prometheus and export in whatever other format. Uh, maybe Zipkin to Jaeger is a better example. In, in Zipkin, out Jaeger. And it does that by converting Zipkin to OTLP and then OTLP out to Jaeger. So if open metrics doesn't allow periods, it doesn't matter. As you convert out of OTLP, you would convert into the open metrics convention. So there actually is a path forward. That's part of the goals of open symmetry is like, there will be a new standard tomorrow. We need to be ready for it. How, how are we gonna be ready for it? Yeah, makes sense, totally. Cool, let's, let's uh, move forward. Uh, we have two more topics and 20 minutes left. So, okay, we have a topic from Yona. Do you want to cover that? And maybe before this, like I just want to mention uh, like the whole kind of meeting we have right now, it would be amazing to, well, I think we are doing it right now, but the whole goal is to just maybe, you know, talk about status, synchronize, uh, advertise our working groups, but actually looks like the direction is to actually do the work, the actual work offline, so we can uh, just summarize and talk uh, about the details and synchronize, yeah, uh, because otherwise we don't scale. Um, that's why I think the most important part is that we are not walking through the dock as we used to. Um, so yeah, what's the plan, Yona, with working group? I know Good to go. Are, yeah. All right, cool. Um, so I've been chatting with Matt about the uh, user survey that we did and trying to make some improvements on, let's say, the methodology or process and really understand what users are doing and where they're going with their strategies and their use of open source tooling, I would say. Um, and obviously, there was the release of the uh, landscape document, I guess, uh, a couple of months ago. So I started putting together a document with Matt, uh, well, just suggesting some of the things that we could do to improve the methodology for the data collection so that maybe we could get a broader view of what people are using from an end user perspective. Um, I outlined some of the changes and, uh, you know, uh, Matt put together sort of like a template for us to start with. 
the idea here, I think, would be to try to put this into some type of document and then track it in an ongoing way uh, through GitHub issues eventually and try to come up with a survey that we can execute um, just to get a better handle of what, what people are doing and where they're going. Uh, there's just uh, the discussion we just had about overlapping standards and what people are doing. This is a perfect example. What are users thinking? Where do users want to go? Uh, what do they want from the community? I think these are some of the questions that could help us make better decisions as a community um, and maybe force us to collaborate a little bit versus building multiple standards, right, all the time. So that's the thinking. So uh, please leave comments on the doc. Feel free to go into suggestion mode or add anything in here. Um, and then I'd like to sort of collaborate on the doc as, as Bartuk was saying and, um, and hopefully come up with something more meaningful that we could use. I don't know if you had anything else to add, Matt, or what you wanted to do in terms of driving it forward. No, I think this is great. I think um, I like the idea in the end of the doc there, there's a rough timeline around, you know, publishing an initial draft as, as has been done now in the Google doc and kind of keeping it open for four or five weeks. My only uh, input would be before we actually go launch the survey and start executing it. Um, uh, we'll need to have, you know, a formal proposal for the working group formation uh, that is approved by the TOC. Uh, um, I don't think that's a big hurdle or anything like that, but just, um, you know, we, we, we can iterate on this within the SIG for as long as we think we need. Um, five weeks to me seems reasonable. I'm curious if others like that timeline. Um, but uh, at that point, we can actually have a Again, a formal proposal that the TOC would vote up or down, I would expect up, uh, and then, you know, we're off to the races. Uh, um, yeah. Thank you for putting this together. I did very little. Uh, <laughs> I copy pasted <laughs> some stuff in the top. Uh, so, but I would encourage everyone on the call or watching the recording later, um, you know, this is what we can do as a SIG. So please do engage and um, and let's work, work in this doc and, and hammer out something that you know, we come to by consensus. And exactly. although we're all technologists, I think it's important to also highlight like people and process and other kinds of things that we don't tend to think about so much, but is really important to end users to understand where they want to go and where they need to go because the vendor side is all technology. And I think it's, uh, it's important to understand how it fits into you know, the culture and organization and processes. So that's all. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so to motivate you all uh, in this document, like there is a huge or like huge, really nice kind of um, potential um, list of questions that we want to ask. Um, and that's definitely some something you can contribute to Like what you would you like to know around yeah and also what what questions could be fair and yeah not exhaust the, <laughs> the, the, the reader. Yeah. i would also be curious just one more thing to add is that how to motivate people to also answer right that's uh, kind of uh, if you have any ideas let us know um i, I would suggest also come, come to think that that we find some time um you know jonah if you want to organize it or we we can try to organize it on the cncf calendar but but you know Again, the working group isn't, you know, ratified yet, but, you know, we could do all of this async using Slack in the SIG observability channel, but it might make sense to have some working sessions like we did uh, for the charter working sessions, like maybe weekly for the next five weeks or something like that, where, you know, we can, you know, discuss these comments. We found that to work pretty well, I thought, um, uh, for the charter document. And so maybe we could do the same sort of process so that, again, this call, the, the SIG fortnightly call is, is just a status check, but but we've actually got time outside of this to to move this forward in a structured way. So I guess it's the time to ask for volunteers or who wants to participate in this type of thing. Is that sort of how it 
proceeds as someone that hasn't put I'll this I'll volunteer together. to participate, but I would prefer to be a facilitator here, not a dictator. <laughs> <laughs> be good to get some users involved too that want to answer certain questions. You could also put something out to the mailing list as well. Uh, the CNCF uh, stick observability mailing list or just the end user community mailing list is a broader one to say, hey, even if you haven't been engaging with SIG observability, here's a place where, you know, you could you could not only help us in terms of what's your feedback, but you could go to your own connections and your own personal network and help drive this forward. I think the, the big takeaway I had from Cheryl uh, a couple of weeks ago when, when we were talking about this or four weeks ago now, time flies, um, is that, you know, it's probably going to be personal networks and personal connections that really allow us to horizontally scale the effort versus just, you know, blank giving emails and things like that. So. Yeah, totally. But I think what you're talking about are just, you know, one meeting or why one uh, work to be done to actually create the survey, design it in a nice way. But another is, is execution. And I, I think that could be decoupled as well. Yep. Um, yeah, makes sense. Okay, right, so we have last topic then. Um, Simon, are you here to introduce that to us? Um, <clears throat> I'm here, yes. So um, from last week, we are trying to have a discussion about what we want to do in the SIG or what's going to be, well, at least have some, some direction. I can turn on my video just to be a bit more friendly here since you guys have a video. So I don't have a background, I have just a kitchen. <laughs> um, so my idea was just to write something um, so Prabha was the first one that said that with all her hats off, she would have more an end user perspective. In my case, when I started with the document, I was looking more into um, use cases. So, so we have, at least with, with things that I work with, so we are also reshaping and doing a lot of things internally in Ericsson, how to operate and like expose data from the network to operators or for Ericsson or for other users. So based on these users, we have also different use cases, which sort of data, which sort of observability and what comes with that. So my idea with the document was to have something like that as a I'm not sure if this exists in, in the in CNCF or in the under the observability umbrella that defines a little bit what is, well, we talk about distributors from observability, like more generic. Um, we have other, um, it's like other, sources as well. For example, Google had this, this uh, software, uh, not software, the site reliability engineering book where they talked about these four golden signals for mainly metrics, I think. It was like more for the infrastructure, for the, the research, the reliability engineer guys in, the, in Google. Um, then there is like a lot of discussion and a couple of good blog posts from Cindy uh, Shiridharan where she talks a bit about distinguishing monitoring from observability, what is one and what's not the other one. Um, and a lot of the talks that I have been following in this space is about um, companies that are walking this route. They are working on, on their observability internally. Usually they are um, either they are writing their own apps or they run the infrastructure or sometimes they do both. For example, in the case of Google, they have both. In other cases, they're just writing apps but deploying on some public cloud. Um, so they usually have a lot of stories from their more like lessons learned from scaling data, uh, in, uh, 
ingestion consolidation of tools, for example, which tools were better working together for the use cases they had, migration challenges that they had moving from one to another one. I guess a lot of that maybe it's covered in the open telemetry group already, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I thought more about having something that was, that a bit sets the, the like I would call, we would call in the ITF, usually you don't write a, you don't start a working group without a use cases document. Um, in our case here, we don't have a document, but we are trying to, to get all this observability information that we have in, in other projects in CNCF and try to consolidate and have a, a start here for users and people working in, in this area. So I, I thought about this could be a structure somehow for us to, to start working on how to like write something that could be a public public document, a public white paper or something. No, it makes sense. It actually, the, the same topic actually um, popped out very, very early. I think uh, even Steve mentioned that. Uh, so let me, let me add it, add the issues. There's issue 16, which is you, you can go and essentially on our GitHub, which is, um, oh, let me open it again, which is essentially the, you know, kind of white paper about observability. So what we are saying, what we are referring to, I guess, as a rebook, something around CNCF, um, you know, spectrum around observability, just um, that could be something like this, I assume. Um, and something in 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 this area, there is also kind of issue number number nineteen. Um, so at <laughs> some point we also talked about entry point, um, you know, page or like documentation where totally some someone totally new to the um, CNCF world. Let's say they 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 grabbed Kubernetes and now they need to uh, migrate or that they want some observability, right? And um, they don't know where to start and what is the kind of offering, open source offering here. So we were talking about some, some kind of index page like this, which will, yeah, root to the proper documentations for different projects and maybe have some global information. Um, so we are definitely, yeah, looking forward for some good ideas how to solve those. And also, I think there was some idea to, 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 to create some working group around uh, yeah, writing this kind of paper, but we need to definitely frame it better and also mm -hmm. make sure we don't replicate the work that all those small, smaller projects uh, already wrote about, you know, observability topics. Yeah, and how to fair, fairly compare those and yeah, so so yeah, any, any other thoughts? But it makes sense, like definitely it's a missing gap, yeah. Yeah, I, I was not sure how to start actually. I, I saw that so I saw that a lot of you guys have already practical experience implementing and running and working with different frameworks and observability. I come a little bit from a different corner. We had like legacy uh, things that are being moved to more cloud native containerized uh, environments and we have a lot of let's say regulations for example 3gpp and other stuff that let's say s decides which sort of data has to be available for which entities we have for example law interception we have operators that need to have their own set of data sets we have us as troubleshooters that need data different data so i was a bit like how uh, how do we put this together as a as a yeah as like as a common work base as a common base for us to to do something here yeah anyone has any thoughts yeah. hey everyone I, I, this is uh, oh sorry Mike hey everyone this is uh, Karthik um, I think I had a chat with Matt um, last week, um, a few days ago, about the SQL observability and um, was uh, really interested to join. I think um, I 
just wanted to build upon some of the points that uh, Simone made. Um, so <clears throat> I'm coming from a project called Litmus Chaos, <clears throat> which is a chaos engineering project for Kubernetes. And I think um, the notion of observability within chaos um, is something that we are trying to build upon, trying to understand. And I think um, any document like this, which talks about observability use cases in general, and an index page talking about the various options can be really uh, instructive. So we can get a good idea of um, how to go about things. And um, I, I think I was just listening in into the uh, earlier topics about standards and conventions around naming the metrics and things like that. So just to get a sense of what all is observability, um, for example, and um, then find out how to go about doing it. Uh, I think I, I'm probably a good example for the beginner or the end user case um, in that respect. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that kind of uh, material. Yeah, I mean, the, the intro that I left in the document is a bit of like things that I have seen in other communities, people working with different stuff. Like we have also more like this SDN heads here and everybody is basically talking about the same thing, exposing data or collecting data in some form to have better ways to monitor, troubleshoot, or what not the system. So the, the, the CNCF, the observability, if I talk about observability with my Ericsson hat on, a lot of people go back to 3GPP legacy way of doing observability that defines some data sets that are telco specific. And these data sets is only about the system health. It's only about saying, ah, okay, the radio is running, the core of the network is running, but there is no connection to applications. There is no connection to performance. There is no connection to any any more refined things that you would like to do in the system. It's just like a very high level overview. And this has to do with things like performance to collect and, and expose all this data. Um, but things are changing now. So we are going in a different direction, but we still have to educate a lot of people. If I talk about observability, it's not necessarily what they, what they know. Yeah, yeah um, makes sense. I mean, maybe you know the the best way to eat an elephant, right? Is is is, is one piece at a time. That that's a terrible analogy, I suppose. But I heard a couple of things, all of which I I think we have um, would be good to to start work on. So one of the things that you mentioned is defining the different operators or the different roles. You know, what what types of of job functions and or people. Uh, need access to observability data and enumerating those and, and calling out them almost in a requirements based way. Mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as a small concrete example, you know, my my day job company, we work in, you know, uh, insurance and financial, um, financial tech, uh, right? So we have a lot of auditing and regulatory compliance issues, uh, not issues, but co concerns and, and, and requirements around how we store data that might have exactly yes very sensitive information in it. it's not yeah. you know and and so like those so i think there, there could easily be like a white paper now today that we don't have um that we could do in the context of the sig collaboratively that, that calls out all of those stakeholders or roles and what their concerns are because that, that that provides like a starting point a shared set of nouns or personas that we can use mm -hmm. pervasively um, yeah. the, the, the second piece of like, you know, um, what projects exist in the CNCF, what projects, you know, where are there gaps? And there's obviously a lot of vendors and a lot of overlap. Um, we just talked about it earlier this hour. Um, but, but that same analysis that just enumerates not, not so much on the operator side, but on the technology or the project side, um, you know, the gaps and identifying where uh, the CNCF does not have a comprehensive end-to-end -end solution. That's one of the primary motivations for making special interest groups in the first place from the from the TOC's perspective. So um, mm -hmm. I don't think one blocks the other, but I see both as really a, yeah. um, important. I didn't generate a GitHub issue for for the the paper intro there that you started because I didn't want to lead the witness or presume yeah. what the output of that is. But but um, uh, to Bartek's point, I think I think if we can. 
either firm up the scope of it or split it into maybe those two things as a idea or maybe three i i don't know um then yeah let's let's work on it and um yeah i yeah. think we we should start with like a skeleton at least or have an idea what or which sections which things we want to write about uh, as you said, the retention, regulation, this is like one aspect that might affect one industry, but not the other one. I thought about, when I talked about use cases, it's more like the, it's really like the, the end user at the end. I mean, if, if a system that I deliver crashes, we have the operator side that has their own, they have their own, their own OSS on site. But if something crashes that needs support, for example, from Ericsson, then we need troubleshooters from Ericsson that has a completely different view from the system. And so there, there are these sort of things that I was trying to like, try to get a structure if we could maybe generalize that for, for your worker, for, for your employer, for my employer, for other industries, like which are the challenges that we have when I talk about observability. I, I for sure have, law uh, interception and data retention policies that are completely different depending on where we deliver something. So I I certainly need some help writing that, but I, I my idea was like to get more this, this skeleton, um, something if, if the group is interested in that, of course. Definitely, yeah. Um, it, to me, it feels like uh, the kind of the white paper idea we had. Uh, so we can just start it off. And, you know, um, like we do with the working group for the survey and the state observability, we should just join, you know, people who would be passionate um, to help and feel that in, or just create the structure for the, you know, questions that has to be asked and answered. So some placeholders for for such kind of document, um, some kind of overview that we are looking for. So I would say let's 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 get uh, yeah issue number sixteen of so the white paper, and just get this started. Um, start a document, um, and start kind of some working group or or rather some yeah focused group on on this one. So that will be I guess the next step. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Um, I can I can make a Google Doc or anyone can. Uh, again, we, we have the long running thing to actually have our own doc store. That's it's still coming. I think it's just been busy. Um, we should have that in the next couple of weeks though. But for now we can just, I can make one or if you want to make a Google Doc um, that I, I noticed we have a Word doc there, but I think a lot of people when last we checked are more easy, more able to easily collaborate on a Google Doc. But, um, I think we're almost out of time. We are. It's 101. Yeah. All right. It's okay. But if you want to, to if you want to, I think I, uh, if you want to start something in the Google Doc and then we start writing or brainstorming and then other people come and give their own ideas, then maybe we, we have a better structure than my Word document in Slack. <laughs> No, 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 yeah, I mean, we could just, yeah, I'll, I'll put something together. I'll take what you've already done and put it into a Google Doc, and that'll be a starting point. Thank you very much for okay. spearheading it. Um, that, that's awesome. Um, I gave it a read earlier today. Um, thank you very much. Thanks, mate. <laughs> okay, uh, looks like time is up. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, uh, for contributions, and... Please be involved and help with the working groups if you are interested. And yeah, see you in two weeks and on chats. Bye bye. Bye, thank you. Thanks. <laughs>